My name is uh, Robert Nazi. I'm the Deputy Director General in charge of research in the Center for International Forestry Research. And when I'm not the DDG, I mean, most of our research is looking about the sustainable use of forest resources and mainly bushmeat. And uh, with C4, we have been working on this uh, bushmeat question for almost 10 years now with uh, several partners. The link between bushmeat and Ebola is that, in fact, <coughs> It is very likely that Ebola is, one of the Ebola vectors are bats. It is very likely that non-human primates, gorilla, chimpanzee, are infected via uh, bat droppings or fruits that are half eaten by the bats that the chimpanzee and gorilla eat. And Ebola kills these animals. In fact, you have, Ebola kills more gorilla and chimpanzee than it probably kills people every year. People find dead animals in the forest, detect this animal, and they use it for bushmeat or, in the case of gorilla, sometimes for cultural magical practices. And by butchering the animal that has been infected, because Ebola is transmitted by contact, they get infected by themselves. So that's the link. But there is also possibly a link with domestic animals also, because in fact it seems that pigs and dogs are also infected by Ebola. In the current case, the one we have now in Guinea, uh, Liberia and Sierra Leone, the patient zero, the first infected patient, is a two-year-old kid. It's very unlikely that this two-year-old kid was out in the forest butchering bushmeat. So it's more likely that it's either by contamination of bats droppings or rodent droppings or in contaminated fruit or something like that. So that, that, that's sort of the, the link between the bushmeat and the Ebola virus transmission. If, if we set aside the invertebrates, uh, we will talk about caterpillars, snails, something like that. It's anything from a, a 200 gram squirrel to an elephant. Is animals kill for food? Which is a different question than the sort of the, what you see in the news about wildlife trade. It's not about rhinoceros horns, it's not about ivory, it's about people killing animals to eat them. It's hunting, hunting for food, which is an activity that has been carried out by, by humankind for a long, long, long time. If you go to a village, definitely everybody, a remote village in Cameroon or Gabon or DRC, uh, people there because they have no other alternative. You go, you go to town, different customer. In, in town, it's more like a luxury product uh, that people will buy for uh, Christmas. They will buy a, a leg of drinker for, for Christmas. In many places, bushmeat is the cheapest uh, protein available beyond caterpillar. So in the rural area, in many places in the Congo Basin or in Latin America, 30 to 80 percent of the protein intake of the population comes from these wild animals or fish. So you cannot tell the people to stop eating bushmeat unless you provide them an alternative. The alternative will be domestic uh, livestock, cattle. The problem is that if you take the amount of bushmeat that is eaten in the Congo Basin, which is about 5 million tons per year, that's about the equivalent of the cattle production of Brazil or the European Union. Which means that if you want to produce this amount of cattle in the region, in the Congo Basin, you have probably to deforest 20 to 25 million hectares of forest. From all the data we have, I mean, it's sort of, even for the most resilient species, uh, the one that reproduce very fast, uh, rodents, rats, mice, uh, it seems that in many places, the population are decreasing. So there is an overall population decrease uh, because of over harvesting. And the crisis for me, it's, it's not only the fact that some very important animals or very precious animals, emblematic animals are killed, it's the fact that even the small ones, the rodents, they are killed and they are not replaced enough. So we are going to have a serious problem in terms of food security. And then we have data that shows, I mean, a sort of that there is a very high correlation between the availability of bushmeat in diet and the stunting of children in the Congo Basin. In, in the forest area where people have enough bushmeat, the occurrence of stunting is almost nul, 10%. In the forest margin, where people are more numerous and they have entered most of the bushmeat to, to extinction, the occurrence of stunting is 60%. 
and it doesn't change with the domestic livestock or no. So that's the, the, this this meat, this game is very nutrient rich. So it, it's it's a very important but small uh, contribution to the diet. Ninety-five percent of the bush meat that is harvested now is harvested illegally, which is different from sustainable. It's harvested illegally because the law is improperly designed. So as a result. You cannot say that there is a ban on bushmeat everywhere, but I mean, everywhere the, the, the whole sector is, is criminalized. Still, if you look at the data we have in Cameroon, we estimate uh, something like there is 460,000 hunters in Cameroon. So that means that you have 460,000 criminals. And you cannot work like that. I mean, it's, you have to adapt policies and legislation so that they can be implemented, so that they can be used. So that's, some people are the true criminal, the ones that are killing the elephants in a protected area, and other people that are killing rodents that are eating the harvest. It's a different case. Well, having a ban on, on hunting is not going to work. There is no alternative. So unless we provide a good alternative to the people for protein, or, or they will continue hunting or overfishing. Well, we should be probably expecting an increasing number of this uh, type of disease. I mean, it's not well, today is Ebola, but uh, Marburg virus, which is the second uh, member of the family of the phylovirus, similar as Ebola, uh, Lassa virus. We, we are likely to expect more out outbreak of this one because of more population, uh, easier transportation, and also because we are better at detecting that. I mean, Ebola did not appear in 1975, where the people were, the first people were dead in Congo and Sudan. It has been with us for a long, long time. Simply people were dying before and nobody knew that that was Ebola. So I, I don't think that there is a big risk uh, to have a pandemic. I mean, sort of, it's the, the problem in, in, in this last case is that the doctor in Guinea did not diagnose early enough that these were Ebola cases. And because the roads are better, and because there is a constant trade between Guinea, Sierra Leone, and, and, and Liberia in this area, because these are the same ethnic groups, then the, the thing moves very fast. But if you take the uh, DRC, there is an, an outbreak of Ebola in DRC now. First, it's in a remote area. To, to go there, you have to walk for 600 kilometers. I mean, there is no, practically no road, so it's not going to go out. So I, I don't see a, a big risk for Ebola virus as it is now to become a global pandemic or big risk. Then if you tell me tomorrow that the virus has mutated and then becomes transmitted by aerosol, then it's a frightening prospect, but it didn't happen so far. So. It is important to understand the whole value chain uh, between the animal killed or dead in the wood to the carcass or bits uh, sold in the market in town. B because if, if you want to have an intervention point in the value chain, you, you need to know who is doing the transportation, who is the wholesaler, who is the detailer, and, 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 and who is the buyer. And unless you understand that, it's very difficult to act on the, on, on the value chain. And because the whole value chain on bushmeat is criminalized, Nobody is standing up and saying, oh, it's me, I'm transporting the meat. So we need to have this research on this informal sector, which is pretty complicated, uh, to understand how that it works and where you can act. I mean, sort of, you can act uh, by giving a better income to the hunter, so they will be less likely to hunt. Or you can act by deterring the people in town to buy bushmeat, so it becomes more expensive for them to do that. I mean, there is a, a whole lot of action, but just saying, I mean, just stop hunting is not going to work for the reason we said before. And in the case of Ebola, it's clearly, I mean, understanding how the thing goes from the, the bat in the forest to a two-year-old uh, boy or girl in, in Guinea, it's something that we need to understand.